Welcome to the Douglas Kelly Show. I'm Douglas Kelly. Last Saturday, I had the great pleasure of traveling to Staten Island to visit with a fabulous artist that I'm just wild about named Mary Mattingly, who is a New York-based photographer, artist, and sculptor whose work deals with the future and future landscapes, global warming, sustainable economies after the collapse of post-industrial civilization. I don't know all of the things that it's about, but it's extremely interesting. Her photographic works, which she shows at the Robert Mann Gallery in Manhattan, often deal with a lonely landscape with a solitary individual coping with rising waters and a very beautiful sort of romantic landscapes of the future, of future desolation and alienation. And she seems to have taken her interest in what future life will be like in 50 to 100 to 200 years to the next level by preparing a capsule sort of civilization on a a barge that's totally self-contained with homegrown vegetables, home-generated power from solar and wind and, and bicycle power. And chickens for eggs in a completely self-sustained living environment where she and a few other artists can nobly carry on in the post-industrial sort of Mad Max economy of the future. She hasn't built this entire project by herself. She has galvanized the interest and participation of many other artists that she knows and collaborates with and that makes this all the more exciting a project. So for the last three or four months, Mary and her intrepid band of would-be urban pirates has been shuffling around the five boroughs with the help of a barge and tugboats and hopefully the project will come to Chelsea Pier so more people can see it there but let's check in on what she's thinking about well this love of the water when I was looking at your your um, website I was thinking about uh, the show that we reviewed last month of the female gaze yes. and that the whole interest in like the watery part of nature is like it, it really is not a male scientific project it has a very female um, uh, a view and, it, and it's it's um, you know it's nurturing it's just trying yeah. to make a, a space and the whole interest in, in the welfare mm-hmm. so your micro community um, mm-hmm. How has that worked out? Is it more of a strain than uh, it was when it was a fantasy? Yeah, I mean, I guess... There was I a lot of brave wasn't... talk about uh, individuals getting along perfectly and I, yeah, I know, I mean, <laughs> solving their problems collectively. Yeah, I guess what I was... Before, as the project was in the works, I was really just thinking about getting it done, getting the permitting done, and that mm-hmm. was a whole like beast of its own. Thing. Right. So I, And I had been working with photography and um, working on failed utopias so I was photographing Mm -hmm. just documentary style failed utopias and thinking about that with this project in mind but not knowing what the result would be and and also picking the people that I thought would really complement each other in a way that everybody was really different and they would complement the project and hopefully they would get along. This is not a utopia attempt, it's just a post-industrial survival strategy. Yeah, it's a survival (laughs) strategy, but but that also, I think it comes into play that you want it to to be a functional society. Do you think given enough time you could acclimate and actually live on this for the rest of your life? Um, It's interesting because here we're always at port, so we're we're never really alone. if we lived on a boat for the rest of our lives, I have a feeling we would be alone a lot more. And right. I know we're all craving that now. We're all like hoping that we'll have two hours a day that we have peace of mind because we're all in each other's faces to an extent. Really? So, so I don't know. Maybe we could. I think that what one thing that we've learned from the project is that you could actually live. You could sustain yourself for a long time on this barge because you recycle everything, including your food waste that makes good compost, that makes right. a good garden. Um, I think this is uh, one of the most brilliant, interesting art projects and, and the total dedication. Um, it's really good. And uh, tell me about your, the inspirations, the people that you're working with who, who, who got you this far. Um, the, you mean artists that have been, inspi- been yeah. inspiring for the yeah. project? I think, well, Buckminster Fuller, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Constant Neuenhaus was a situationist architect. And All right. He had this idea that cities would be mobile and they would influence right. play, so people would be very confused when they woke up in the morning because the city would always be moving. Right. Um, and and then just really survivalist stuff, I mm -hmm. think. So the fact that um, after our industrial revolution, we're gonna we're not gonna have as many as much access to materials. We're gonna have to be reusing a lot more. We're gonna have to re relearn how to make things and what would our perceived, you know, what could our reality be like uh, as Americans? So right. this is thinking about that, and I think people come on here and they're maybe confused about the aesthetics, and the aesthetics really came about as a result of what we had, which was kind of a cool project in itself. And right. Like what we collected was what we had to use. Right. So, I mean, I have nightmares about it, <laughs> but... It's like but, anchor salvage. Yeah. It's like whatever you could find around yeah. around where you were building it. And we found this in the Brooklyn Navy Yard where we built. We found you know other stuff just around the city from water towers or mm -hmm. or from materials for the yards or from mm -hmm. wastematch.org and things like that. But um, but I think that that aesthetic I don't I don't know I think it's it's co-opted by a lot of artists that are thinking about those things I think. Right. And I think that's you know cool. you've gotten you've gotten some you know sponsorship and some mm -hmm. help and stuff. What has been um, the key to that? Um, I think convincing people that it would actually happen took a long time. So, mm -hmm. so finally, when when we you know played a Hollywood thing for long enough, we convinced a law firm that that the project would happen, and they've been our saviors in the whole thing. So when we finally got them on board, they're a nautical firm. They helped us find an engineer. When they finally convinced the engineer that it was a worthy experiment, he helped us find somebody else. So it kind of went like that in a, that a makes long sense. road. It was the, the, the nautical law firm was the key. It was the key. This, we have to stick to some aesthetic here, even though it's well, random. It's, a, it's, a, it's an artist collaborative performance space mm -hmm. that has to do with future anthropologies, which aren't mm -hmm. written yet. So, frankly, um, you're in uncharted waters, to make a rather mm -hmm. bad metaphor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like Cortez burning the ships. <laughs> I I've been also really inspired by the Brooklyn Navy Yard. They have these cranes in there with wheels and they're on train tracks mm -hmm. and their houses in the center of the crane. But are, are your little structures here, are they, are they weatherproof or winter in New York? It's no, cold in really New York Harvard. But we've been working on it the entire time. So we built out in May. We started living on board in June and we continued to build right. until, until now. So we would not mind building for winter. Mm -hmm.